Hello friends, my name is Jibid, thank you for coming by. I have a custom order to show you. Um, this journal was made for a lady who was able to give me many specific details and um, thing about things that she liked, which is um, good for me because it gives me lots of scope and um, you know I, I know that the things that I can include that uh, will suit her. Um, so I haven't actually used everything, but um, I'll just tell you some of the requests that I have used was um, fairies, um, some of the flowers were hollyhocks, pansies, peonies, poppies, daisies, lilies, and mushrooms, dragonflies, bees, ladybugs, um, hidden writing spaces. So you get an idea of the, the kind of journal that this will be. Um, so this fabric was also requested specifically because I've used this one before. Um, only this one is a hardback this time. And um, I used this fairy image. I chose this one because, mo mostly for the colour. I like the way the um, branches match here, the yellow and the little blue tip matches perfectly the blue flowers. And also you have some jasmine uh, in a print on the inside of your book. Um, and you might not, might be able to see that I've put lined paper behind this fabric. Um, like so, I thought it kind of made it look more stationary-like and journal-y. So I thought that worked quite well. Um, I thought probably would be a nice idea you could even put um, something on the typewriter, you know. It doesn't have to be on a typewriter, it can be on the computer, just to put scripts behind as well. would work quite well on pale fabric. Either just odd words or even I thought it would be quite interesting to fill the whole page as well. So I may try that sometime, if you don't try it before me. Um, and there's a charm on the side with, I don't know if I'm going to manage to do this very well, just balance the book like that, no, let's see, should have practiced this, okay, so the little book opens, Ugh. okay, haven't filled every page with this, but there's a few little pages, um, there's a pocket with a teeny tag and some fibre, there's some writing, there's a tiny fabric tip in, so this could be like a little fairy book and a little picture there. And that closes with a magnet. And then on the charm there is things like, uh, let's see, some flowers, little mushroom, beads. Some little fairy bells, this lovely lampwork bead, another glass bead there. Um, so the colours that she wanted was pink, pinks and greens, and that's what we've gone with. Um, I've done some trim along the top and bottom, and lots and lots of sewing. Um, so here we are inside. I've done a little file folder here um, and used a, a mind frame, a little yellow clip. It's a bit tight but um, I wanted to use the yellow because it matched the cover. Uh, so on this, this is how I've done the personal info insert this time and that's tracing paper and that's a little card for your numbers and just some general collaging that we're focusing to do having a bit of trouble okay um, and these are I think mostly Tim Holtz papers yeah, so this is a little bit tight, but I think if you just clip on the back 
there then you can use that without having to keep removing it so I've done a big end paper again using wonderful memorandum papers and um, I've done it again so that it, well if the charm wasn't there it would open completely flat so you can see that the page is open very easily without having to prop them open you know you can um, have it easier to write that way so little graphics fairy uh, fairy <laughs> I've stamped some lines on this butterfly I do like this colour combination I have to say pink and green it's one that I like um, just some little collaging with some silks and burlap, some little um, wood pigeons on a postage stamp because I thought those colours look really pretty, the pale pinks. I've chosen Rose in Bloom for the library card. There's your little writing practice and there's a nice um, Shakespeare quote. I've done a few um, little collaged envelopes for this journal, like so. Just um, using some scraps and stamps and machine stitching. A little fairy journaling card. Let me see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, and that opens. That's a little um, writing area. So I've just used... <laughs> How was that? I think it was like that. That's it. Just a clip on there. We have some stenciling and some hand embroidery. Again, this lady didn't want um, a lot of writing space got just the um, a few hidden writing spaces I think there's some note paper in here with dragonflies on and some hollyhocks and I've used some music manuscripts um, to make this um, uh, you know pocket thing um, I like to use the music manuscript when I'm folding big stuff because um, if you look out for the old-fashioned ones you can get some really big um, brochures, uh, pamphlet style which you can open so they're usually in the double page and it gives you um, a lot of room for extra folds and tucks and things so you can get that all into one sheet. Um, same with map pages like atlas pages are, are useful to use for things like that. Uh, here's a little handmade envelope and I've just left this blank for you to um, write on as you want and just put the little um, seed packet graphic on the front and I like to leave these open so it gives you a bit of space there to write as well or of course you can glue them and use them as an envelope if you wish so there's a little um, vintage graphic about some uh, dressing up costumes which actually all look exactly the same except this one's got fairy wings so some ideas on there for your next costume party this is a little magnet and I've just printed these out um, like these journaling cards often come on a sheet of A4 so I've just left it as it was and attached it to one extra piece um, to attach down and then just a little magnet closure so, oh and uh, sorry on the backs I've put some writing paper um, some pockets here there's one here lined with book page and some nice stitching And that one opens up for another pocket and writing space, more vintage book pages. 
and I've been trying to think of ways in which to um, use up some of the in-between pages on these. You're probably familiar with the um, Edith Holden, the Edwardian Ladies Diary book and um, a lot of us like to use the images because they're so beautiful. Um, but actually the, the writing pages are, are very nice to look at also. It's a nice colour that they use and um, I think that they make really nice backgrounds for envelopes and journaling cards and things, which is a nice way not to use, not to um, waste those in between pages as well. So I've done a few of these collaged envelopes, just some scraps and stitching, little um, stamp there from Mackie Stamps, and I've used the Pansy Fairy. So that's a little envelope. the other side of the butterfly um, pansy postage stamp little birdie vintage tea card and some vintage coupons and that's just a little journaling card I have a bit of bad news to share with you guys um, I'm having a little problem with um, customs um, not actually having a problem but a potential problem um, and it's to do with whether I'm allowed to um, send dried flowers and specimens in the post um, so you've seen me use pressed flowers in um, tracing paper and like bookmarks and journaling cards and things and um, that's the issue really I'll just see if I can find one um, skeleton leaves like this um, I, th I think that things like that does depend on the country that you live in but um, a lot of my stuff does go to the States so this is a real leaf glued onto the paper I don't know if this counts as um, things that you're not allowed to send. So um, if anyone does have information on that, perhaps you've come across it in your work or in your life. Um, so at the moment, sending things like that is on hold um, until I am able to get a definitive answer, which is, I have to say, really difficult from um, customs and excise. So um, any information is um, very gratefully received. Uh, I'll just show you this before I move on. So this is just a little tag, but I thought this was a nice idea just to use some fabric instead of the paper for the little um, strengthener. And um, there's a sweet little poem here by Chaucer, which I've kind of done, so it carries on, um, about daisies. Yeah, so this customs thing may be a problem for me. I have to see what happens. Um, we're trying to email customs in different countries and see what happens, but um, so far I don't know. Uh, if you are in my queue, um, uh, I am trying to get the problem sorted out and get an answer. So... Um, if it happens that I'm making your book and I haven't yet had an answer, then um, you won't be getting re um, actual specimens and samples in, in your book. So um, if that affects whether you want to carry on with it, please let me know. That's perfectly fine uh, if you want to cancel your order. Um, on the other hand, what I was thinking was if I'm sending out somebody's book without a sample then um, once I do get an answer from customs to say it's okay hopefully this is what I'm hoping will happen I can then send you some tags later that would contain the same specimens so um, that's where I am at um, I have done a video a week or two ago about a, um, a travel book 
to Italy, um, which you will you'll not see that until mid September because um, it's a gift for somebody. So I'm waiting until the gift is given, and then I can upload the video. Um, so at the moment we are early August or kind of mid August. Um, so I do mention this customs thing again. So it may be that it's resolved by then, in which case you can ignore that. But uh, I've got into a situation where the, the video timeline is a bit confusing again. So just to explain that. Um, so I've chosen this one because it's got dragonflies and also the water lilies. And also the, the bee orchis from here. And um, I've done some copper stamping on tracing paper for a tuck there and a little B vintage tea card and some extra note papers on that side so some more um, stitching on here and this is one of those um, felt envelopes that acts like a, a tab sticking out of the edge of the book and poppies some little scraps in here, it's a vintage ticket, another pansy postage stamp, a little journaling card, and a mushroom. So I've done some more um, printing on tracing paper, and some sewing machine lines. And this artist also was requested specifically, Bruno, uh, excuse me, Bruno Liljefors, and he was a watercolour artist and did these really amazingly detailed um, wildlife uh, pictures, paintings. I love how this very delicate lace um, goes so well with the cow parsley here. Even in the shape of the, um, the scallops, it looks really pretty together. Um, I forgot to mention earlier with the laces... Um, a lovely lady called Lydia has very generously sent me some beautiful, very delicate and pretty uh, lace samples and she, she sent me a really big parcel. So I want to thank you Lydia so much, that was really very kind of you, thank you. I've used um, quite a few of them in this book. Where am I here? So this is the jasmine that I printed, this is just... Um, from the garden and I flattened it and inked it with a brayer and stuck it down. Some more lilies, some stamped lines here. This is a vellum little kind of a pocket sort of thing, fold out thing with stitching. Another pocket some more stitches. This charm is removable if um, you prefer not to have it on your book. And here I've used the um, dust jacket of a book cover, vintage book cover. Of, I've used it because it's a garden of peonies and I've lined it with book pages and this, this is the spine so that's folded over and glued down and then that's this section is, is the one that comes over the front cover to the inside. So I've just um, made a little pocket there. Some more scraps. There's a quote. There's a little mushroom with stitches. A fabric ticket. And some more writing space. So this is again on the sewing machine. little hand embroidery done some um, what are they called cyclamen flowers here's a little tuck or oh, a little sticky tuck 
This is the problem with using um, the double sided tape sometimes. So I've put some silk and some more of Lydia's lace here, some burlap trim and a little bee tape and um, another, this is just from a wildlife book, a lovely foxgloves, I love the colours of these, um, with some kind of random stitching around. Sorry, I had to pause. Um, okay, so here's a little um, tuck with some extra writing space and I've used the Shirley Poppy here with the beautiful pinks. Um, this is more graphics fairy images and I've used this quote about writing from Jack London and so these two little teacher fairies with their pointing sticks and writing implements so that's just extra paper. Um, that's a little envelope with vellum, just backed with some scraps and a little fairyland image. Um, that video that I was talking about that's coming in September about Italy, it's a travel journal. Oh, I'll just show, talk, talk to you about this for a moment. Um, this is cotton organdy, which I'm really enjoying using. And um, I've stamped this with two different types of ink. This is the Distress Inks, which you can see gives a more, um, it bleeds a little bit on the fabric. And I think it's really nice to use as backgrounds. And then you can use your sharper ink in the foreground. And I think that gives a really nice effect. Um, so this is tea dyed, or you can get it white if you want to. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this vit um, video of Italy, the travel brochure. Um, something funny happened to me. I woke up in the middle of the night after I'd done the day after I'd done that video, and I woke up in the middle of the night, um, and my brain was telling me. Wait, that's not set in Italy, it was Greece. And it was really peculiar because... Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm referring to the Midsummer Night's Dream play that I mentioned. Um, okay, so this um, envelope, I chose this page because it's got the dragonflies. So I've just done more random stitching and some little leaves. Yeah, so in this video I mentioned Midsummer Night's Dream being set in Italy and that's why I've used a certain image. But um, I woke up at four in the morning realising that it wasn't Italy. So it just got me thinking about it being interesting how our brain works even when our um, even when we've gone to sleep. Um, because for the last 20 years I, I've imagined that play in Italy and it was really peculiar. It's never occurred to me before. So our brain is obviously still working when we're asleep. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and nice that, nice for me that there's still some activity there. <laughs> that was a nice surprise. <laughs> My brain still works a little bit. Um, when I use book pages, uh, I like to keep them relevant to the subject or the era, or um, I use them for a particular reason because of the, the type of paper that they're on. Um, but I do make an exception for when things are in French because French is just so cool and I love seeing French words on things. And um, I was thinking it makes me determined never to learn French because <laughs> I think it would spoil the illusion then if I, if I could speak it. So I'm determined not to ever understand it and then things like that can continue to look cool. I've done a little um, thingy here with three different sized uh, pockets for tags. This one is tracing paper. I didn't want to make it too bulky because these are scrapbook papers. So that last one I've, I've used to um, stamp some tracing paper on there to make it a bit thinner. And I've put these um, linen threads on here. Um, 
this is. What is this? A little magnet with extra space and uh, this lovely daisy image. This is an interesting artist, Margaret Tarrant. Um, very, very similar to Flower Fairies. Um, maybe with a slightly more sinister edge. I think sinister probably is too strong a word, but um, if you look at some of her works, you probably know what I mean. Uh, very beautiful and very talented. I've added some um, stitching on here. Um, and apparently they did know each other. Um, Cecily Mary Barker stayed at her house, or the other way around, can't remember. Um, but they were contemporaries, and a, a really very similar style. Um, she reminds me more in that um, kind of slightly darker edge of Enid Blyton um, and those stories, uh, which I never liked as a child because of because of that darker side. I've used some um, Shakespeare paper uh, book pages here and just added some writing space and some fussy cuts and um, this wonderful quote from Walt Whitman and I have to thank um, Sorry, going back to this September video again, I, I did mention that um, I did mention Walt Whitman again, and because we're out of timeline, it was going to sound a bit strange when you come to it. Um, but I couldn't remember the lady's name who had mentioned him, and um, I've managed to find her now. It was Renee from GT Designs, and she introduced me to Walt Whitman, um, who actually I'd never heard of before, and um, in fact I have heard of him. I heard of him in Breaking Bad. <laughs> so, yes, I have watched Breaking Bad. I live with four other men, and uh, four other men, no, four men, and no women. So, um, my house is very. Um, there's a lot of testosterone. It's not all flowers and roses here. Um, so that was the only reference that I'd ever heard of Walt Whitman. We, we don't do him in school here or anything. Um, so I was very interested to learn about him. Um, Rene said that Walt Whitman argued that we don't need to go abroad or distances to see beautiful things. And beautiful things, including the beauty of nature, is right in our own backyards. And we just have to see it and love it and appreciate it. And I thought that was really beautiful. Um, and so I've bought his uh, Leaves of Grass book, but I haven't had a chance to really look at it properly. So I want to thank you, Renee, for 